besties and thank you so much for joining me in today's video and welcome if you're new my name is Lindsay and if you guys are new here I just love all things beauty so much and in today's video we are gonna be talking all about the new Burberry goddess perfume this is the bottle which I really do enjoy and you guys as soon as I saw this sneak peeked I knew I wanted to get my hands on it I didn't even see it posted on trend mood I must have missed that posting I actually saw it on Ulta so I did blind buy this perfume but I just could not help myself I had to get my nose on it sooner I couldn't wait for it to be shipped so I went to Ulta got my nose on this perfume I think the new Lancome perfume the new Mugler perfume and one other one. Oh, um, I know it's Gucci, but the name is something Magnolia. If you want videos on those perfumes, comment down below, let me know. But this review is going to be of Burberry Goddess, and this Burberry Goddess perfume review is not going to be super in-depth because I've only had it for a few days now, so it's going to be more of a first impression. But for only having it for a few days, I think that's a nice dent. Let's go ahead and go over the price the description and of course the notes before I talk about how I feel but spoiler I really do like it also if you're interested in my makeup or the perfume I will link that down below and really quickly if you do purchase your perfume from Ulta I always recommend if you're gonna pay full price ever to have some type of something with that like some type of incentive so for me personally I always purchase perfumes on points times rewards events so for me personally when I bought this perfume I got it on a five times event that way I got 700 points from Ulta with my purchase that's the best way to shop just putting it out there Ooh, and you guys these are a little bit pricey these are $100 for the one fluid ounce 1.6 fluid ounce is $129 that's this perfume right here also comment down below how do you feel about the packaging I quite like it it kind of reminds me just a little bit of something but I can't put my finger on it the coin low-key reminds me of like the uh, little chocolate coins that I would have when I was younger but something else it's definitely giving something else let me know if you guys can think of it but I think it's really nice I love Burberry her as well and that perfume is also pricey and for the 3.3 fluid ounce it's $168. So these are definitely not cheap. Please go to the store. Make sure you love the perfume enough before you do get it. Don't be like me blind buying and just hoping and hoping and praying that you do like the perfume. Now I have to tell you guys when I went into Ulta initially and I smelled all the perfumes, the one that stuck out to me the most was definitely this one. The Lancome one was all right, the Gucci, uh, what is it called, Magnolia was pretty, and then I did enjoy the Alien, but that one was, there was something that kept me from really loving it. Idol's knew I really was not feeling that one, or sorry, Lancome's Idol knew that one, I could just, I think I could pass on it. This perfume really did stick out to me. It's really hard when you're testing multiple different perfumes, especially in a store like that where there's scents going left and right. But you guys, this one I kept smelling on myself and absolutely adoring. You know what it smells like to me? It's funny because the overall messaging of this perfume is self-discovery, but to me this perfume actually reminds me of... It's sweet, but it's not too, too heavy and sickly sweet and sticky. It's not cloying. But for me, this perfume definitely reminds me of like when you've had someone in your life that's very calming and they make you feel at home, but you've never had like a romantic kind of relationship with them, even though there's always been a little bit of a spark, which I find that comes from the ginger, giving it that bit of spice, you know? And then when it dries down, it reminds me of you actually coming to the realization that there might be something more and maybe you should revisit those feelings and make more of the relationship because you know there's some possibilities there that's kind of what this perfume definitely reminds me of for me personally the only perfume I think it reminds me of is Monger Lawn and for me this one is definitely sweeter this one has licorice which is very strong in this perfume as soon as I smelled it without ever knowing notes just because it's so popular I thought I'd be fine I thought licorice there has to be licorice in here even if they don't list it and they do list it and it is there 
but there is that same vanilla lavender vibe going on where it's done in a feminine way. I know a lot of people think YSL Libre is more masculine compared to this and I would agree even though I still don't think YSL Libre is something that I would see worn by a man but whatever. This is a gorgeous perfume. This one is much sweeter. There's something very intriguing about it alluring if you will it is a beautiful perfume super sweet but again it's not too cloying in the hot heat i've wore this in august in florida for the past few days and i really do like it but let's go over the notes so we have top notes of lavender vanilla cacao and ginger middle note of vanilla caviar which i think is really interesting and unique and a perfume and also vanilla absolute and even though it has three different types of vanillas and cacao i don't feel once again that this is overwhelming or too heavy with the sweetness i think because it is balanced out by the beautiful aromatic lavender and then also the ginger that gives it a bit of a kick and a spice but even though it's super warm and spicy it's definitely Again, it is sweeter than the Monger Lawn, just putting that out there. I really do love this. It's super comforting, but it's also very sweet and almost, almost sexy. Almost, it's a little sexy, I'll say, a little flirty in my opinion. Could be worn for every day. Not every day when I'm just in the house, but when I'm out and about, going to the mall, the movies, wherever, Sephora, Ulta, all those things, because I still like to smell good for me in general. This perfume, like I said before, is about self-discovery. And let's go ahead and read up a little bit more about that because I think Ulta's website has a brief description. The new campaign follows Emma Mackey and a pride of loneliness. Radiating confidence, strength, and kindness, Emma embodies the spirit of a Burberry goddess. And yeah, I can definitely see something very trustworthy in this perfume, something very sweet and kind and caring but again it's borderline sexy not super seductive or anything like that but there is something flirty in my opinion to this perfume i absolutely love it like i said i can only speak for it for the few days i've had it but it has been such a lovely experience and i've been reaching for this more than other perfumes of course because i'm trying to get a good feel for it but then also because i just really do love this dna i've also let other people wear it as well and they do love it it's not a very strong projecting scent just putting that out there that's very important it's not but it is super long lasting so even though i would say projections moderate it does have really good longevity i would say even after seven eight hours you're gonna smell this on yourself at the eight hour mark you're probably gonna want to reapply but yeah that's kind of where i am with this perfume to describe it i would say i get a lot of the warmth a lot of that comfort spice and overall of course that burst of vanilla so for me when I first sprayed this on I was you know I was interested but again I just thought of Monger Lawn as it dried down I realized it was much sweeter and it had not more to it but it had the differences I was looking for to make it justified to keep this perfume and this perfume because I'm not gonna lie when I smelled it in store and I thought of Monger Lawn I was like oh no I already blind blind bought it I don't want to have to return it and and the longer I've had it, the longer I do feel like it does have its place in my collection. So yeah, you guys, I really do enjoy this perfume. I think people that are looking for something very sweet and gourmand but not too too heavy to where you couldn't wear it in the hotter months, I think you're going to absolutely adore this. I think if you're someone that loves Monger Lawn but you cannot get with the licorice, I think you're also going to love this. And I think that if in YSL you also feel like the lavender in there is way too strong, way too pronounced, you're more of a YSL intense type of girl, even though this one doesn't smell like that either, I think you're also going to love this. And if you smell this perfume close enough, there's almost, I think, from the ginger, even this bit of a citrusy, lemony tang to the perfume that I also find super addictive. So yeah, you guys, if you've had a chance to try this perfume, 
please let me know down below how you feel about it. Do you recommend it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you feel indifferent towards it? Have you smelled this DNA before? For me, this is not the most unique because again, I did think of another perfume, but I still feel like it does stand on its own. I do not think these are the same perfume. I think they both have something different to them. If you want something that's sweeter, a bit cozier, I think this is perfect. If you're looking for a perfume that has more of an elegance and a classy vibe to it, they both kind of have a mysterious vibe to them, but those are kind of the differences. And that licorice in here, once again, is super intense. So I can't always wear this one, whereas this is gonna be something I reach for so much this summer, fall, winter, just year round. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do not forget to give it a like, comment, subscribe, all the good things, and I will see you in the next one, besties. Bye!